hope you remember um, that it's a called work calculation. It's an important thing that uh, physicists calculate, um, and it's actually a beautiful calculation, as you might see at the end of uh, Calc 3. Um, so uh, this idea goes into a lot of some sort of uh, conservation principle. I think there are many conservation principles in science, and this work calculation is a part of it. Um, that's their idea. All right. So constant gravity, and I explain all these things. All right. So here's the introduction. So again, here's the ground, and here's this a wire or rod, very thin rod, and there's a bid that's hooked to it. So you can move it around. You can imagine, right? And there's this bid here, and you can move things around. And this is perfectly like a perpendicular to the direction of a gravitational force. It's gravity applying there. OK? If you move it like that, um, if you don't touch that, if no wind is blowing anything, and that rod is going to stay there, if the, rod, uh, the bit is going to stay there if the rod is perfectly horizontal. Make sense? Right. Gravity is keep pushing it down, but it's hooked to this rod, so the gravity couldn't do anything. So, but I use my arm and I hold that bead and move it over here, and I did some work, right? So my arm did some work. My the work done by my arm pushing it here to there is separate from um, the gravity. What gravity is doing? So, do you think the gravity is contributed to? Um, you know, moving that one to that. Maybe, maybe um, look at the second situation that will help you. What if my rod is perfectly downward, like this, like 45 degree, and there is a bid in there, and it's oiled nicely, no frictions, not anything. So if I let that one go, then gravity is doing something, right? Before gravity didn't do anything, right? Did gravity do anything? It's just moving nowhere. Gravity do nothing, but here gravity is doing something. It's gonna slid down, slide down in here. If I just let that one go, right? So gravity did some work. Now I grab this one again, and sliding it down to that position, and I did my work. My arm did that work, but gravity is helping, right? So there is a notion of work done by gravity, source of the force, in doing the task of moving things, a thing, moving the bid. Sorry, not thinking clearly. Along that rod, some specific description of a task we just uh, did. Make sense? All right. How about my arm? Then you can do that work done by my arm in moving blah, 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 moving the bit, right? So I grabbed that. I did the work too. But the gravity is helping this time, right? So the work, it's, it's distributed like this. So if I take that over here, Maybe that bit is so high density, it's so heavy. So when I move this one to that, it I actually feel that I'm doing the work. But when I do that down here, would you believe that my muscle probably requires a little less work? Maybe I don't have to touch it at all. It's going to go down. But when I keep that speed like in a certain speed and moving down there, and it's actually the gravity is helping, right? And some of the forces um, is coming, uh, work is coming from that. So that's the idea of the work. Something has happened, and don't look at it as a totality of a work. A work is all done by my arm, and it's kind of repetitive. It's all separate calculation. And so all the source of the forces acting on that is calculated separately. Work done by the gravity, work done by my arm, and things like that, right? So if the rod is 
is like this and then your bid is over here and if you're moving that over to that then gravity is not helping right you feel that if you move over there to that gravity is contributing to the work against the way the direction is going so using the positive and negative and you can indicate things, things like that so that's the idea of the work it's sensitive to don't look at it as a totality again it is all um, in terms of um, um, individual for for the source of the force that is involved in if it, several for a source of the forces are involved we calculate the several different work don't try to put them all together as a sum right they, uh, they want to look at it a different thing. All right. So how are we going to... This is the idea. is a qualitative dis discussion that what the work is. And this idea is its definition, the physicist's definition. So that it behaves nicely and with this mathematical formulation of a conservers and conservation principle. All right, the work is not recording how fast you're moving. If you grab that one, it's heavy thing. Let's say you grab that one, it's a heavy thing. I applied with my arm certain force there and move it really quickly from here to there. All right, versus slightly in you know, a smaller force and moving quickly. The speed of all the other thing doesn't come into a factor. They only care about how much of the force. This is a work calculation. How much of the force, constant force, is applied to move that linearly in along that direction of a distance t? Okay? And it's a constant force. F distance d. By multiplying these two things, they they realize it captures the amount of work they are thinking about, right? What is the work they're thinking about? It's not the everyday notion of the work. It's work done by the gravity, the moving, all separated, separated, all right? So what is the work done by, if I move that one to that we're using my arm to distance D, what is the work done by the gravity, according to that definition? How much of the gravity force is helping toward to that direction of movement? Zero, right? Because when you let that one go, when you don't touch it, it reveals how much of the gravity is doing the work, right? No work is done. It's not moving at all. Therefore, you conclude there is no work done by the gravity along that direction. Zero work is done by the gravity in moving from here to there, right? All done by my arm work. When here, there is a contribution from the gravity. Make sense? So it has to be the same direction. So it's difficult to understand at this stage, the gravity force um, applied to that mass M. What is the gravity force? Anybody remember how to calculate the gravity force applied to M? M times G. That's how much the force is acting on that, right? Then how much force do you think it's kind of exerted if you kind of have a measurement in here that detects the force as you move it slows down and it's sliding down, then what would be that? Do you have a feeling that it's not going to be mg? It's something smaller than mg, right? And um, interestingly enough, it just obeys this decomposition as if it is a triangle. And it, if it is a 45 degree, that becomes exactly mg divided by root 2. That turns out to be the actual force that is felt by that, that thing. So I'm going to call that one M F tilde. Gravity force is down, pulling down mg. And what you're going to feel to the slide down is a proportional obeying the trigonometric um, idea exactly. Why is that? Is actually there is a good mathematical explanation, which I'm not going to go through, but that's the measurement. All right. So if the distance here is a 2 meter, for example, two meters, right? Then how much work is, do you think is done um, by the gravity? So work done by gravity. Since there's no other confusion, the description of a task is clear, right? It's sliding down the two meters down there, right? Is the physicist uh, idea according to the physicist idea, how, how long 
did it move? It's two meter, right? It's contributing to two meters. And how about the force that is coming from the gravity along that direction is that much F tilde, right? Not mg. So we see mg divided by root 2 is the idea, 2 meter. Maybe uh, with the magnitude in that and, um, and all that. So this is not force. Force multiplied by distance, right? What was the unit of the force? Newton. How is Newton made out of? Kilogram multiplied by meter per second. I hope, hope kilogram is right. Could be gram. But one or another. <laughs> That's not important. I'm not going to trick you with that unit thing. But this one is called joule, I think. If this one is in Newton and this one is in meter, then this one is called joule. So that's the idea of a work. All right. Third example. That relates to our experience. All right. So here is a mass M. I use my arm and grab it and pull it up four meters up there. It's too high. It's more than my height. <laughs> so let's do this is a 0.5 meter. <laughs> 0.5 meter that makes more sense. Or you can use a cable, you know, things like that. 0.5 meter, I pull it up like that, right? So what is the work done by um, the gravity and things like this? So you have to, I'm going to introduce the um, uh, coordinate system. So this is where x equals 0. And, and this is x equal positive up there. So therefore, this um, gravity g should be negative point 9.8 meter per second squared. Do you agree? It's like acceleration direction is opposite to the orientation of the positive distance axis, right? So that's what that is. So I move that to that direction, um, dealing with the gravitational force. And so let, let's first uh, calculate that. Work. I grabbed it and lifted up. Work done by gravity. Is equal to the force, gravitational force. Let me write down Fg, the gravitational force, times 2 meter upward, right? It's 2 meter positive. Let me emphasize it like this, positive 2. How about that? Make sense? What is the gravitational force? Mass, which is always positive, times negative 9.8, right? Times 2. So mass is positive, so it's 19 point, negative 19.6 times m, whatever that is, joule. Good? That's the force done by. So it actually moved towards the positive direction. We calculate the work done by the gravity. It turns out it's a negative number. Right? So it didn't help. It worked against it, right? And work done by my arm. Is, I don't know how much of the force I put, put it in there, right? Maybe I pull it really quickly, 0.5. Maybe next guy pull it slowly. Whatever the force is required to deal, um, to deal with that. If I puts a really strong force there and you can see that it moves really quickly, right? So force done by my arm times a positive. Because I um, pushed it to the direction of the positive distance, it's going to be whatever the force I used in there is going to be 2 Fa and Joule and it's a positive number, correct? But often um, the book phrases that what is the work done by uh, lifting this one up to there? What they mean is that how much the work is done against by the gravity? What is the minimal amount of uh, work is done by the gra um, by my arm? You don't have to put excessive amount of um, force in there just to deal with that the gravity. So the work done by um, work to, to required to lift this one to up and here is what they mean by that is work done by the um, 
and the gravity is against the gravity. How much the work is done to deal with the gravity. That's what they mean by that. All right? So work done by the gravity is often phrased that what is the, how much the work is required to lift this one to up there. Okay? If there's no gravity, and I can just toss it up there, I don't have to push it, it's going to rise because there's no gravity rises there, right? So no force is required if there's no gravity to lift it. Just initial slight bump, right? But um, if there is a gravity, you have to deal with the gravity. So often it's rephrase it, work required to lift. In other words, um, the work done by the gravity so that you can work against the direction of the gravity. Hope that makes sense. All right? To work to require to lift this one up to there and would be um, now it's W is positive direction of the force to deal with the gravitational force, right? What is that? M times um, positive direction of 9.8. Positive 9.8 times M. Does it look like uh, my arm force is, you know, using against the direction of the uh, gravity? Positive 9.8 M. Because negative 9.8 is gravi gravitational force, and the opposite way is how much my arm is dealing with that force. At least against the... I can do an excessive amount, but that's not what we're calculating. <laughs> kind of minimum work is required to lift this one up. And I move the distance of a positive 2. That's exactly the opposite direction. So 19.6. Um, not meter, this is the mass M, <laughs> joule. Does that make sense? All right. So let me introduce something called Hooke's Law. I think that's their first example. And this is an example of non-constant force, and then we're going to formulate it. So you notice that we're uh, assuming that the gravitational force of this object is always the same because m times the acceleration it's generating is constant because of the phenomena, experimental phenomena, and um, we have the um, conclusion that force we're dealing with it here and there, 0.25 position and 0.5 position, force generated by gravity is constant, right? So that's why focusing on a constant force in there. Make sense? All right. So let's suppose a situation like this. Rough surface. Make sense? So we have uh, things are there, some object. We try to push it. You require the direction. The friction with the rough surface generate the force uh, against that to that direction. This is something called the tensor calculation. Exactly what kind of force is generated there, what you're going to feel when you push it toward to that direction, and there is a force acting against that direction. Whatever it actual direction of the force is generated by the surface, total sum that is acting against the direction of pushing the, this direction is all summed up and calculated, right? So that's because of the rough condition is non-uniform, it seems like it's different everywhere, all right? The force acting against it here, position x1, and the force generated by, I'm going to call that f1 tilde, This, uh, the force you're actually feeling against to that the pushing direction is F1 tilde, is then that position is different from when you are pushing it in this position. And uh, there is a force generated by the rough surface, and in that position X2, and these two forces that you have to deal with is not the same. It's different, right? So, um, so in that way, that they say the work required to move this thing to that is really the work done by the uh, rough surface, the, the friction, right? This is it, uh, the same notion, is work done by what kind of force? What's the source of the force? Friction. If you interpret the friction as a source of a uh, power, 
source of a force. Make sense? And this is really opposite, don't you think? The force is, um, friction force is working against it. When you push it, you have to deal with that force, amount of the force. You can push excessively, but you have to at least deal with that amount of force when you push it, right? If there's no friction, you push it at the beginning, and you let that one go, no force is applied anymore, it's just like sliding through, right? So no work is done. You, you don't have to do anything if it is if no friction in there. So work done by work required to move along that is uh, talking about work um, work done by the friction in there. Make sense? All right. So again, the idea is the same. Here is the position x k minus one and x k. And suppose we have um, work required to push at that is kind of opposite direction of, of uh, friction force that was fx is, uh, is it varies make sense it varies and but it doesn't dramatically varies in that short period of time so that's that that f of xk is representative uh, presentative make sense representative we assume that it's, it's kind of the same, although it's slightly different. So what is the uh, work done in there? Is it de um, delta WK? Would that be all right? OK notation? Work W, delta. How much work is done? Pushing it from here to there. So how do you calculate that? Force, F, delta XK is a represent. We assume it's a constant force you have to deal with, times distance. Delta x. That's how much work is done to move here to there. Next moment, different uh, delta sum like that. So total work done. Is roughly each interval. We calculate the amount of work that's done. In there, it's delta w k. So that's exactly. Well, this one has to be approximate. This one has to be approximate as well and k going from 1 through n is f of xk that denotes a slightly different force that you have to deal with generated by friction and times delta xk looks like Riemann sum again it looks like Riemann sum that approaches from beginning position to the ending position and force integrated uh, with respect to x so that's the uh, formulation they have over here and it's a description there okay so work done by a variable force in moving an object along a line from x equals a to x equals b in the direction of the force is calculated like this and this rough surface calculation a situation is a good example to explain this one Okay, so I hope they had an example on that one, but we do not have time to do an example. But um, we'll we'll continue and work. So I'd like to clarify that a little bit. So here is the the ground level there, and I think there is a rock up there with a m being three kilogram, right? And this height is oriented as x equals zero. And up there, this level is x equals two meters, right? And and this guy John and did the work and take that and put it down on the ground, and that's the work he did, right? And the first part is asking you to uh, compute the work done not by John but the gravitational force exerted on that rock. Okay, so let me write down the gravitational force like F subscript G. And I'd like to emphasize that uh, gravitational force asserted to this mess at each location at x equals 2, x equals 1.2, x equals 0. What is that? Gravitational force as a function of x. Is that positive or negative first? Direction, the gravitational force is to the ground, right? So it's a negative number, right? Correct? But what is the magnitude? How is it at, as a function of x? 
If the gravitational force applied it here, gravitational force applied it there, which one's bigger? It's the same all the time, right? That's assumption. So although I'm writing as a function, but it's actually constant. 3 kilogram, right? Times what? 9.8 meter per second squared. So let's work that out. It's a negative. Is that 29.4 Newton? Okay, so that's the answer. So I emphasized it here. That's uh, supposed to, you know, in, in general it varies, but here it's a constant part. Um, that's how you calculate the work, yes. Not yet. This is just the force, and when you enter work calculation, then we do that. All right. So what we did is we started from x equals 2 to move it down to x equals 0, right? That's what's happened. Is Maybe it's done by the gravity, maybe it's done by something else. But that's what happened. The object moved from x equals 2 to x equals 0. And the work done by the gravitational force is a contribution from the gravity. Maybe there's a contribution from that guy, John. Maybe there's a wind blowing up and down, whatever. There are lots of sources of force acting on that. And the work done by each of the sources is the correct notion to think about. So the first one is that what is the work uh, done by the gravitational force? And you, it, is, it is calculated like this. The beginning stage is x equals 2, right? And terminal stage is x equals 0. You have to write it like this. And then you um, integrate the force along with the axis there. That's the work calculation. Okay? So let's calculate this. 2 to 0, what is the F, um, gravitational force formula? We worked it out. It's a negative 29.4 constant, right? There's no x involved. It's always the same, the dx. Okay, in the integration form. So if you just multiply by 2, that would be the same thing. But integration formula is like this, and it's a good formulation. So let's calculate this one. Negative 29.4, what is the antiderivative? x, right? And evaluate the 2 to 0. That's weird, 2 to 0. You see that 2 to 0 gives you a negative number? It's a negative 2. So it's a, being like this times negative 2. So altogether it's uh, 0.8, um, 8 again, 5. Is that roughly right? 58.8 um, unit joule. Alright, so we got this positive number that usually means in the integral calculation the positive number means it helped. The gravitational force helped overall. Maybe locally, if it varies, if it's simple, it's constant, so it is always helping. But if the um, the force is complicated, it's changing. This con calculation means is overall net contribution was helping contribution, assist, right? Okay. So work done by the gravitational force in moving here to there is a positive 58.8 joule. And especially noting the positive that gravitated, gravita uh, gravity helped us helped John to move it down, right? So part B is asking um, the following. How much work is required from John to vertically move the rock down to the ground? None, right? That was the key point. It, John didn't have to do anything. You just let that one go. The gravity will do the work, right? Because that's the situation. So the answer is a zero joule is required from, from that guy. Because there is a helping force there, John didn't have to do anything. He could still push it down, and then it goes down a lot faster, right? Then 9.8 acceleration. Yes, good point. And there, that actually, I thought about it. Suppose here is there and no gravity. Very good, very good question, actually. So there is exactly the same situation, right? And no gravity is emphasizing no forces acting on that rock. If nobody touches anything, it's going to be hovering there forever, right? So how much is work is required by John to move this one to down there? The answer is still zero joule. It's because all he has to do is a gently push that rock downward. Then he doesn't have to touch anything, correct? Then what's going to happen to that rock? 
because of the Newton's law, it keeps going. There's no forces acting on anymore. Infinitely small, that's even better, right? So in the calculation of the work, is that his, his answer is uh, it could be very, very, almost a small joule is necessary. But physicists say that it's just a zero joule. At the beginning, you have to just impulse, right? Sure, so on impulse. But work calculation is multiplied by that distance d, right? If the distance d is very small, like this, and then, you know, very small force and apply the very short distance, so the almost a zero joule, then what happened to that one is it keeps the momentum. The velocity never changes because no other force is acting on it. It is slowly going down, right? And we re reach the zero. So if that's the question, no force is acting on it, how much work is required by John to move that one down to that position is almost a zero joule. It's a better solution by Bo. Does that make sense? So when, when the problem is saying, how much work is required to do that, there's always a force that's acting against the movement, and that's what you're calculating. Here, your gravity is this way, you don't have to do anything, but when you're picking it up, you're going back with the um, gravity, right? Then you definitely require some work to lift it up. Okay, Same kind of calculation, but I'll go through this um, um, integral calculation, but you, you the numbers involved is exactly the same. So that's the comment, and that's the complete answer for part um, 1 and 2, Roman 2 there. And there's a part B. Any question about part A? Um, this is pushing it down. So part B is picking it up, right? The rock is here and going up to x equals 2, correct? So when you do that, you calculate it. Um, work done by gravity. Is that all right? WG? Where was the initial location? Zero. So initial location is down there, always, in the integral calculation. What is the terminal location of this move? Two, right? So versus two to zero, correct? And then you do the same calculation. There's a gravitational force at each of the points, which happen to be constant. Then it's going to be exactly the same calculation, except zero and two is swapped around, right? So do you agree that's going to be a negative 58.8 joule, right? So it says negative number. So in this move, the gravity didn't help. It was acting against it. So that's a part one. And part two is that, so how much of the work is required from John to do that? Gravity wouldn't do that. Gravity was doing the backward work, right? The, the, the John must have done the exactly same amount of work to move it to the other um, the direction from the 0 to 2. So the minimum amount of work is required by John is actually, if I, I'm going to describe the motion again, it's almost, but it's slightly larger than 58.8. .8. Okay, so we can just say that the answer to that is a 58.8. .8. This amount of work is required well, from John to move it from um, up in there. All right, let me describe it. What, why I, what I mean by that uh, is a slightly more than that. It's just like the same thing that we discussed it here. So the ball is here. If John applied exactly the same force, which is uh, 29.4 Newton, if John applied exactly 29.4 Newton up there, what's going to happen to this rock? Nothing because it cancels out exactly, right? Gravitation force and his palm is exactly doing the same thing. But once he pushed the 30 Newton, then there's a leftover power, right? That gives you the little bit of impulse. Little bit of impulse. Now rock is moving. Right after that moment, he adjusted to 29.4 again. Then what is the force amount is, uh, applying there? Zero, it canceling out, right? So net force applied to that rock is zero right after split seconds later, but it still has that momentum from that. The canceling out does nothing to the rock, but it moved a little bit. So that slow, you know, the motion is, is going up. So I thought about this one. Suppose um, this rock has some painting in it. If I turn the light off, only the, the rock glows and you don't see anything else, not you don't see John or his palm or anything. So if you look at just rock, what happened is this rock is just going up, slowly rising itself. That rising momentum was given by just 0.6 Newton, extra Newton is given at the beginning. How long? Very short amount. 
So that jewel is almost none. So the force actually required to move that one to that is a slightly larger work is required, but it is just 58.8. That amount of work is at least required to move it to um, lip from down to bottom. Does that make sense? All right, so those are the two answers. Yes. Right. When I was writing that problem, I didn't expect that you would be sensitive about the orientation. So however you calculate the work, that's probably fine. The main purpose is number four. I understand I didn't go um, enough example last time to, to be, you know, I so that I can expect the good answers from you. So don't worry about that part. But and I'm going to stick to this oriented way because that's a better way from for today's example. That be all right? So however you did it, if that's reasonable enough and that's you're going to get a good grade. But I want you to stick to this coordinate system and get the directions and things like that. That's better. All right? So I'm going to introduce a couple more examples of this this type of work calculation today. Right? I realized I reached the end, so I have to stop. Um, one minute's break. So it's 125, I'll start at 126. 126, I want to 20. All right, it's time. Let me start. This is a spring mass system. So you will see this again in differential equation, and differential equation is usually offered uh, right after the Calc 2, and that's pre um, prerequisite for that differential equation course in spring mass system. It's very interesting, a very simple system, but uh, still a lot to study in here. And so this is called equi this is a spring system. Usually the mass is attached in here, but there's no matches attached here, and you just pull it uh, with your by hand, but this is equilibrium position. If you don't touch a spring, the end of the spring is located here, and we set that one to equal to x equals zero. Okay? And um, if you stretch it to the uh, to the right, so it's a positive distance to the right from the equilibrium position, and um, if you if you're holding that end hand, end by hand and you feel this uh, force is generated by the spring, right? And you certainly uh, see that the force generated by the spring is trying to retract back in there, right? So that's Fs, force generated by spring. And this location is x, you think about always a function of x, just like we did that in gravity, right? But in gravity, it was constant, right? But what you're feeling about, if it is a close to equilibrium position versus spring further away from the you know, equilibrium position, don't you think that if it is further away, the force you have to deal with is a lot uh, stronger, right? So the Hooke's Law is the following. Hooke's Law is that it's not just qualitatively, you know, larger and smaller, it's actually proportional to the displacement of it here, okay? With some constant k. It could be k squared, I mean, x squared, that still match, uh, matches the description I have, but he was saying it's actually exactly x to the first, directly proportional to the value on uh, displacement of x. But what do you think the direction of this force is? Direction of the force generated by the spring. At that point, spring is trying to retract backward, right? So the direction of the force is a negative number when x is a positive. So let's put that negative over there when k is a positive. Does that kind of match the description when you pull it down and pull it to the further away from the equilibrium position? Correct? x is a positive, k is a positive, there's negative, so backward direction. Correct? What if you retract it? What do you think the source of the force of the direction of the spring um, force generated by spring is? You try to retract back, right? So it's like probably this direction there. Okay, so that's the force generated by spring at x, where x here is a negative number. Remember? It's a negative number. Let's see if it is still consistent. This formula, and he still thought, Hooke still thought, the magnitude is still proportional to the displacement of uh, you know, how much is further away. And it's about the direction. When and k is a positive and x is negative, the whole thing is supposed to be positive direction. You agree? Retract it back, so the uh, direction of the force is a positive. So which sign is the correct sign? Positive, negative here. When k is still same constant, here x here we're dealing with a negative. Which sign 
um, should I put it here, that matches the direction of the force. Still negative, right? Positive, negative, negative, altogether positive. Therefore, it matches the direction. So this the same formula, negative kx, holds for, you know, um, to the right or side, left side, it's all the same formula. Okay, so that's Hooke's law. The force generated by the spring is a negative k times x. If it's further away, the magnitude of the force you're dealing with is the, um, it's harder. So let's do the same thing, like uh, like the gravity. Suppose in here is an example. Let k be two. Ignoring all the units, so um, we have force negative two times x. That's Hooke's law, right? The force you're dealing with in the position x, if you're holding that spring, that much of the f uh, force you have to deal with. Make sense? So suppose this is equilibrium position, x equals 0, that's the end of a spring, and I use my hand to move it to the x equals 2 here. So I moved it. So let's calculate the, the work done by the spring. Okay. So it is given by this integral, right? Each of the tiny um, distance multiplied by constant force, that's exactly on the force multiplied by the tiny distance delta x, right? We assume that short period of uh, segment, we assume that um, force is constant, although it's actually changing this time. You agree that's changing this time, right? This distance and that distance different from gravity and stuff. But what was there? initial location? Zero, right? What is the ending location of this move? Two. So you calculate that if it's positive, it'll tell you that spring was helping or not helping, right? So let's do that. What is it? Zero to two. You know the answer, right? Is it helping or not helping? It's not helping, right? So if you calculate it, uh, negative two times x and dx, right? So that's negative x squared 0 to 2, correct? So it's negative 4. So negative 4 means the spring, the work done by the spring is not helping moving from 0 to 2. It's work against it. So what do you think this work required by my hand to move it from 0 to the 2 position? Exactly 4 joules. Because that's the only force that is acting on it, right? What if there's no spring and no frictions how much the work is required to from 0 to 2? No spring attached to it, no friction from the ground. How much is the work is required to move that little thing from here to there? You just push it gently at the beginning and it's going to slide. It will never stop, right? Just like the no gravity zone. So 0 joule is almost 0 joule is required to move it from here to there. But there's a spring attached that are always acting against it, right? So what about this one here? If, um, it was located x equals 2, and I moved it from here to there, right? The work required, um, work done by spring is how much is work done by the spring if I move it from here to, from here to there. Is it helping? The spring is helping to move it from here to there, or so it's actually positive four, right? Positive four is helping. So how much of work is required um, by my hand to move this one to that? Zero joule because the spring is doing. It. I don't have to do anything, right? That's the situation. All right, let's do the other way around. That gets, gets a little weird. Here was x equals zero, and I moved it toward to this position, which is x equals negative two. Okay, I pushed it. Make sense? So we calculate it. The work done by, when I move this one to that, how much is work is done by the spring? So initial position, zero, right? Terminal position, negative two. And this is the um, signed uh, formula of the force and integrated. Is that supposed to be positive or negative? Negative, when I pushed it, the spring is not helping, right? That's our intuition. Let's see the math. how is the mathematics picked up. What is the antiderivative? The same, right? 
negative x squared and 0 to negative 2, right? When negative 2 go in there, still positive 4, correct? So it is still negative 4 because of the negative. So you said it wasn't helping, right? Correct? Yes. Yeah. I think that if you set up the formula of the force correctly, being careful with the sign and different situation, you don't have to worry about anything. This machinery of calculating through the integral is supposed to pick up the correct answer. Right, so and that's what I did in here. The, you know, putting zero and negative two is awkward to put zero down there, negative two up there, right? But that's to suppose how it works. This uh, integral system picks up nicely, and everything is interpreted correctly in that way. So if you do that, just calculate it without thinking. The answer is negative four, and this negative should be interpreted correctly. It's negative is not helping, right? But it is true. If you move it toward, you know, compress it, the spring is not helping. It's acting against this move. That's what this negative is about. So therefore, the work required is really for Joule to act against this thing, right? But if again, if I move it from here to there, then work required to move here to there is zero because spring is going to do that job, right? So if you calculate negative 2 to 0, blah, 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 it's going to be positive, right? Positive 4. Spring is helping. I don't have to do anything and, and so on. Make sense? All right. Let's look at some problem. Okay, I'm back in here. Say so one more thing. This is fs. The reason I put fs is introduce um, fx. That's the force uh, by my hand. All right? Not the spring. I'm holding it and then stretching the pot, and that's the force that um, I'm applying in here. So um, when I move this, um, so let me just, in, this W is the work done by my hand, work done by my hand. So first let's calculate um, force uh, by my hand in here. And it's, you know, it's, I can just choose any force and then it could be a lot uh, more than is necessary to, to deal with the spring force, right? So it, you can write down anything, but you can write down always like uh, positive kx. And how is it different from force generated by the spring? That's exactly opposite, right? If I apply that much of the force there, that's going to be exactly zero force that applies to that, right? So if I apply that much to um, right after the beginning moment, then just like that, um, what I described it, like impulse force, and I'll be able to pull that all the way to whatever the position is, right? Okay, so that's kx. To be exact, maybe that we are applying that um, to the, the very beginning. It's very difficult to describe. So let's kind of ignore that impulse moment at the beginning that generates the momentum, right? If I ignore that, would that be okay? If I just state it like this, my force is k times x, but still things are moving. Okay? So... Um, from going from 0 to 2, position 0, that's my uh, what my hand did, and that is fx then dx, right? That's the work calculation. And you know that 0 to 2 is uh, 2x, and we did that calculation exactly the same, except this negative, so I got positive 4, right? So when I move from here to there, um, by my hand, the, the work done is exactly positive 4 joule. And what is done by spring is a negative four draw, so they cancel out and you conclude that's the least amount of um, thing that you can do. But I can have a second hand and maybe I'm going to call that one an F tilde. Hey, I have two hands, so both of hands and applied it here and do twice as much work, right? Why not? You pull it like this. If that's my force, um, uh, amount of force applied to that and then work will be exactly two times it, right? But excessive work is done to move from here to there. So if I apply this much of the force, and this is 2, how would you describe the motion of this thing and end motion? If I turn the light off and there's a little light there that you can only see that, how is this light is moving? Accelerated or not? If the force is just this. They cancel out, right? Negative kx and positive kx. There's no additional force. So it's moving at a constant speed. Correct? 
If I put this excessive force there, then kx is cancelled out. I still have kx left out, the force. So the constant force is applied to that. So it's moving accelerated. And that's the meaning of the work done by hand. Okay? But if it is exactly like that, and that's going to be a matching that. So that's what they mean by work done by work required to move things to that, where the spring force is acting. All right. So let's